Hello everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to look at related rates. So up till this point we have talked about the differentiation rules, product rule, power rule, chain rule, quotient rule, derivatives of trigonometric functions, log functions, exponential functions, implicit differentiation, and logarithmic differentiation. In this section, we will need to use implicit differentiation because this section is about looking at problems that ask for the rate of change of one variable when it's known how the rate of change of another related variable is. So for example, you could have air being pumped into a balloon. We know the radius is related to the volume of a sphere. If we know how the volume is changing, we might be able to find out how is the radius changing of the balloon and vice versa. So as we go through related rates problems, we will be using these steps. And I highly recommend that you go through each of the six steps when you solve related rates problems. Step one, draw a picture and name all the variables and the constants. That's important in this, pro in this section because all the problems typically will have some type of geometric interpretation. It could be a box, a sphere, area of a rectangle, Pythagorean theorem. They're typically related to, ge to geometry. All the variables in the problems will be changing based on time. So though those variables are actually functions, differentiable functions, of time in this section. Second step is to write down all the numerical information in the problem. They should be related back to the variables from the first step. Third step is to write down what rate you are being asked to find and express the rate as a derivative. You can either use Leibniz notation, which I will use, or you can use prime notation for your derivatives. Once you have the first three steps, the fourth step is the most important step. It is writing an equation that relates all the variables in the problem. So like I said, this could be a geometric formula for area, volume, surface area, Pythagorean theorem. Those are just some of the ones that come up in this section. Once you have the equation, differentiate the equation with respect to time. All the function, all the variables are functions of time, so differentiate with respect to t. Once you have the derivative, then you can substitute, substitute in the values, the numerical information that you found that you had earlier, to find the unknown rate of change. All the rate of change related rates problems will always be following these six steps. Let's jump in and do two very quick examples of, of related rates. These are very common problems to start off with. You have a pebble that's dropped into a calm pond in example one that are causing R ripples in the form of concentric circles. So in other words, the circles all have the same center. The radius of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate one foot per second. When the radius is four feet of the outer ripple, what is the rate of change of the area of the disturbed water? Start off with a diagram or a figure. This time we're talking about a circle for the outer ripple. The outer ripple, we are talking about a radius r. So radius r will be representing the radius of the outer ripple. also include units, which this is in feet for the radius, and we are associating the radius with the area of the circle, the outer ripple. And area is in feet squared. All right, so that's the first step. Write down the variables and draw a, fi a figure or a diagram. Now write down all the numerical information in the problem. We are given that the 
ripple, the outer ripple radius is changing at a rate, so that is dr dt as a derivative, one foot per second. And the other numerical information given only happens when we are trying to find the derivative of the area with respect to time. So the third step, find the derivative of area with respect to time only when the radius is four feet. So that's the third step. We wrote down what we're trying to find in the problem. The next step is the most important step. The area of a circle relates the radius with the area. So A equals pi r squared. Differentiate with respect to time on both sides of the equation, dA dt is equal to pi is a constant, derivative of r squared is 2r, and then since r is a function, multiply by the chain rule, dr dt. We are trying to find dA dt, which is the change in the area with respect to time when the radius is 4. So this is equal to pi times 2 times radius is 4, and the radius was changing at a rate of 1 foot per second. So this comes out to be 8 pi, which is approximately equal to 25.13. And don't forget about the units. The area is in feet squared. Time was in seconds. So when the radius is exactly 4 feet for the outer ripple, the area of the outer ripple is changing at this rate, 25.13 square feet per second. Okay, let's try the next example. We talked about this one a little bit earlier. This is inflating a balloon with air. Air is being pumped into a balloon that is in a sphere, spherical shape. The volume is increasing at a rate of 100 cubic centimeters per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon increasing when the diameter is 50 centimeters? Okay, so the diagram or the figure is already given. You have a sphere, and we're talking about the radius of a sphere. They give us the diameter is 50 centimeters, but we'll come back to that. We need the radius of a sphere, and this is in centimeters. And what else is changing the problem is volume. So V, volume of sphere which is in cubic units, cube, uh, centimeters cubed. So that's the first step. Next step is write down the numerical information. The volume is changing, so dvdt. 100 centimeters cubed per second. And like the last problem, the diameter is 50 centimeters, only applies when we are finding the derivative of radius with respect to time. So find dr dt when, now we need to come up with radius because nowhere in the problem we have diameter. So radius is 25 centimeters when the diameter is 50. So that's the first three steps. The equation that relates volume with the radius. If you have to look this up, do so. The volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed, radius cubed. So differentiate with respect to time because v and r are functions of time. 4 thirds pi r constants, derivative of r cubed, 3r squared, times the chain rule, dr dt. This time dv dt is known, it's 100 cubic centimeters per second. The radius we have is 25 centimeters. We are trying to find dr dt, the change in the radius. So this gives 100 equals 4, third, 4 thirds pi times 3 times 25 squared times dr dt. So the threes can cancel out. If you solve for dr dt, it's 100 divided by 4 pi times 25 squared, which will reduce to 1 divided by 25 pi, 
which is approximately 0 0.0127. And this is talking about the change in the radius. Radius was measured in centimeters. Time was in seconds. So when the diameter of the sphere is 50 centimeters and the volume is, volume is changing with the air in the balloon by 100 cubic feet per second, the radius is changing at a rate of 0 0.0127 centimeters per second. So not that much. So this gives you an idea of how to use the six steps and how to solve a related rates problem. Okay, the next few examples are going to be a little bit more involved, more work than the last two problems. Let's look at example three. This time, instead of filling a sphere with air, we're going to be filling a conical tank with water. You have a water tank in a inverted circular cone shape. So as a diagram, inverted cone on its vertex, inverted. You have a base radius of 5 feet. The height of the cone is 10 feet, and that's labeled in the diagram. You have base radius, 5 feet. And you have the height of the cone is 10 feet, or depth of the cone. Notice that the base radius is exactly half the height. As we fill water up in this tank, that ratio will always be consistent. The radius will always be half the height, always. So if we call x the um, radius of surface of the water, which is in um, feet, and if we call y the depth of the water in the tank, also in feet, we can relate the, ra the base radius and the height like this. The radius is the height divided by 2, or the depth divided by 2. That's going to come in in a second. So let's keep going. The water is being pumped into the tank at a rate of 9 feet cubed per minute. So that's the change in the volume, dvdt, 9 feet cubed per minute. Find the rate at which the water level is rising when the water is 6 feet deep. So it wants us to find dy dt, how fast is the water level rising, when the depth is 6 feet, or the height 6 feet in the cone. So Variables are defined, v, x, and y, v is the volume, x is the base radius, or the radius of the surface of the water, and y is the depth, or height of the water in the cone. Keep in mind that all three variables are functions of time, and we are trying to find dy dt when the depth is 6 feet. So if you have to look up this formula for a cone, it's one-third for the volume times pi times radius squared, the radius is x, times the height, which in this case is y. So volume equals one-third pi x squared y. Now this causes a different problem as we have than have we have seen in the past. If we take the derivative of v, we get dv dt. We have that information. If we take the derivative of x, we have dx dt. But there is no information in the problem about dx dt. We do know dy dt, though. So, this means we have to replace all the x's to be in terms of a variable which rate that we do know. And we do know the rate of, of how, how fast y is changing. So let's change x to be in terms of y using the formula that we came up with earlier. Volume equals one-third pi times y divided by 2 all squared times y. If you simplify this, you'll have volume equals 1 12th pi y cubed. So now the volume is only in terms of the depth of the tank. Take the derivative with respect to t, dv dt, 
is equal to keep the constants 1 12th and pi derivative y cubed 3y squared dy dt so notice that there is no dx dt because we we eliminated the x by substituting in y over 2 so dv dt that's 9 that's how fast the water was being filled into the tank 1 12th pi times 3 y is the depth of the water in the tank six feet at the time of the measurement and we want to find dy dt so you can simplify a little bit this is 36 divided by 12 is 3 3 times 3 9 so you have 9 equals 9 pi times dy dt which gives you dy dt is 1 divided by pi which is approximately equal to about 0 .0, 0 0.32. The depth was measured in feet and the time was in minutes. So when the depth is exactly 6 feet in the cone and the water is being filled into the tank at a rate of 9 feet cubed per minute, the depth is changing at about 0 0.32 feet every minute. So you can see, if you have too many variables in the equation, you may have to make a substitution to eliminate one of the variables. That way, you have all the rates of change that you do know or that you are trying to find. So that was a very classic problem involving related rates, filling a tank with water. Here's another problem that's very classic. In pre-calculus, you might have seen a problem about, about a ladder that's leaning up against the wall of a building or the side of a building. You're given the length of the ladder, just like in this problem, it's 10 feet ladder. And in pre-calculus, you are given the side, either the side from the base of the ladder to the building, or you might be given the height the ladder reaches up the building and you're asked to find the remaining side of the of the right triangle in pre-calculus that's what's being asked in calculus you're asked to find what is the rate of change of how fast a ladder is sliding down the wall or how fast is the slide the ladder sliding out from the wall so you have a 10-foot ladder in this problem it's resting against a vertical wall, so you have a right triangle. The bottom of the ladder slides away from the wall one foot per second. So this side is increasing its distance as the ladder slides out. At the same time, this ladder is sliding down the wall. So we need to introduce two variables. This distance x, the horizontal distance, and y will be the vertical distance. So x will represent the um, distance from base of ladder to the wall in feet. It does help to write down the variables as you start the problem. y will be the distance or height from ground to top of ladder in feet. You don't need a variable for the ladder because the 10 feet will not change. It'll always be a 10 foot ladder. Now that's the that's the second step. The bottom of the ladder is sliding away at a rate of one foot per second. That's the dx dt, that rate of change. So it's this distance is increasing, so positive one foot per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down? So find dy dt when the bottom of the ladder is six feet from the wall. So when x equals six feet. So these are the first three steps. The fourth step, what equation will relate x with y with 10? Pythagorean theorem. 
So use the Pythagorean theorem to help you set up the equation. x squared plus y squared equals the length of the hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse length is 10 feet. So x squared plus y squared equals 100. So now the next step. x and y are functions of time, so differentiate with respect to t. The derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. And the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dt. And the derivative of 100 is 0. Now let's make sure we have all the information we need. x is 6 feet. dx dt, 1 foot per second. The y is not known yet. And dy dt is what we're trying to find. So let's try to find out what y is. You have a 10 foot ladder. That's the hypotenuse, length of the hypotenuse. And then you also have this right triangle. You want to find out what is y when the x is exactly 6 feet. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. And this will give you y equals 8. So y equals 8 feet. So we have x, we have dx dt, we have y, and we need to find dy dt. So we have all the information we need. Substitute all the information in. 2 times x, 6, dx dt, 1 foot per second. y is 8, and dy dt is what we need to find. This is equal to 0. Solve for dy dt to tell you how fast the ladder is sliding down the wall. So if you solve, you'll have negative... 12 divided by 16, which is negative 3 fourths. The units, y is measured in feet, t was in seconds. So that's the rate of change of the sliding ladder. Notice that the answer is negative because the distance for y is decreasing. So you'll have a negative 3 fourths feet per second. So like I said, this is a very classic problem involving calculus and related rates. You might be given how fast the ladder is sliding down the wall and be asked to find out how fast is it moving out from the wall. Very similar. You'll know dy dt and you'll need to find dx dt. But keep in mind, the ladder is not changing its length. It's always 10 feet. Okay, the next example. It's going to be involving a right triangle but not using the Pythagorean theorem. The hot air balloon is rising straight up in the air from a level field. It's tracked by a range finder 500 feet from the liftoff point. So in the right triangle, you have the, it's a right triangle because of the balloons rising straight up in the air. The range finder is on level ground 500 feet away. So that's a constant that's not changing, 500 feet. At the moment of the rangefinder's elevation angle is pi over 4 radians, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. How fast is the balloon rising at this moment? So we need variables. What's changing in the problem is the height of the balloon, which they represent as y. So y is the height or elevation of the balloon above the ground and this is measured in um, feet and what also is changing is the angle that's being referred to in the example so theta is the angle of elevation Um, to the balloon and this is measured in radians those are the only two things in the problem that's changing now if these are the only two variables we are given the rate of change of the angle which is d theta dt 0 0.14 radians per minute and we need to find 
the rate of how fast the hot air balloon is rising. That's dy dt. When the rangefinder's angle of elevation was pi over 4 radians. What's the equation that we need to set up that involves theta and y? We can't use the Pythagorean theorem because this distance between the rangefinder and the balloon that's also increasing, and that's no information is given about that in the problem. The equation needs to involve a trig function, a right triangle, and you have an angle and the opposite side from the angle. That's tangent. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent for a right triangle. Y divided by 500 is the equation. So if you solve for Y, you'll have Y equals 500 tangent of theta. Now you might be wondering why do you get y by itself? It's because when you take the derivative, you have dy dt, and that's the rate that's the rate of change that you want to find. So take the derivative on both sides. dy dt is equal to 500 to the constant. Keep it. Derivative tangent is secant squared theta. Keep the inside function the same. Times the derivative of the inside function d theta dt. So you can solve for y before you take the derivative, or you have to solve for dy dt after you take the derivative, if you haven't solved for y before. So now, all the numerical information should be known. The angle is pi divided by 4 radians, and d theta dt is 0.14 radians per minute. If you calculate this, it'll come out to be exactly 140. 140 feet per minute. The height is changing at 140 feet per every minute. When the angle is pi over 4 and the angle is changing at 0.14 radians per minute. All right, example six. This one is also involving a right triangle, and we are talking about distances of the right triangle, so it looks like we might need the Pythagorean theorem. You have a police cruiser is approaching a right angle intersection from the north, and a chasing is chasing a speeding car that is already around the corner and is moving east. So just like the diagram has, Police cruiser is approaching the corner and the intersection, and the speeding car has already rounded the corner and is heading east. So it makes sense to put this on a coordinate system where the corner is right at the origin, 0, 0. When the cruiser is 0.6 miles north of the intersection, the speeding car is 0.8 miles east of the intersection. And the police determine with radar the distance between the two cars is increasing 20 miles per hour. If the cruiser is moving 60 miles per hour at the instant measurement, what's the speed of the speeding car? Okay. So let's call, these are talking about distances again, so let's call x the distance from intersection to speeding car. And this is in miles. And we'll let y be the distance north from the intersection to the police cruiser. Which is also in miles. Now you might be wondering, is this exactly like the um, ladder sliding ladder problem? Well, it's similar. But this time we have a distance between the cars that is changing. So let's use S. To represent the distance between the cars, which is also in miles. So 
So that's the, those are the variables that are changing the problem, all with respect to time. The numerical information given, um, the distance between the cars is increasing 20 miles per hour. That's ds dt, 20 miles an hour. So it's positive because the distance is increasing. We also know that the police cruiser is moving 60 miles per hour. So that is dy dt, because that's representing the distance from the police cruiser to the intersection. But notice that the distance is decreasing from the cruiser to the intersection over time. So this is negative 60 miles per hour. So you might be a little confused that we're talking about speed and the speed's negative, but we're not talking about speed necessarily in the problem. The dy dt is representing the change in the distance instead. So that's the numerical information. And the problem's asking us to find what's the speed of the speeding car, which is dx dt, when it is 0.8 miles east and the cruiser is 0.6 miles north. Okay, so then the only equation that relates x, y, and s in terms of a right triangle is the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus y squared equals s squared. And let's see, before we take the derivative, let's see if we have all the information we need. We know x is 0.8 miles. dx dt is what we're trying to find. y we have is 0.6. dy dt, it's known, negative 60 miles per hour. s, it's not given in the problem. So we have to go back and find s. So we have a right triangle, just like the sliding ladder problem we have a missing side that we need to determine. X is 0.8 miles, Y is 0.6 miles, and S is unknown. So Pythagorean theorem, 0.8 squared plus 0.6 squared equals S squared. And it turns out the left side is one equals S squared, so S must be one mile. So now we know S. And we also know ds dt. So we have all the information we need now. Take the derivative with respect to t. 2x two, two dx dt plus 2y dy dt is equal to 2s ds dt. Make sure that you take the derivative before you plug in any numerical information. Otherwise, you'll lose the variables. So x is 0.8 dx dt is the unknown rate of change, uh, y is 0.6, dy dt is negative 60, s is 1, and ds dt was increasing at 20 miles per hour. So if you solve for dx dt, dx dt will be equal to, so we have 40 and then this will be plus 60 times 0.6 times 2, nope, 112, so 100, 112, divided by 1.6, 70. So the, the speed of the speeding car is 70 miles per hour. The X was measured in miles, T was measured in hours. And it is a positive answer because the distance X is increasing. So since the distance between the cars was increasing, it makes sense that the speeding car is going faster than the, the police cruiser. So the police cruiser will never catch the speeding car. Okay, and then our, in our last example, this is also going to involve the Pythagorean Theorem, but it's a little bit more work than just Pythagorean Theorem. You have a rope 
that's running through a pulley at point P. So there's the pulley. That the pulley is bearing a weight on one end of the rope, which is represented with W. The other end of the rope is held five feet above the ground. So that's this five feet. And the other end of the rope is in the hand of a worker at point M. So this is the worker's hand with the rope. Suppose a pulley is 25 feet above the ground. So from the pulley to the entire ground is 25 feet. So since the worker's hand is already 5 feet above the ground, that makes sense why this is labeled as 20 from the pulley to the worker's hand level. The rope is 45 feet long, so that's important to take note of. The worker, so we've already talked about the pulley is 25 feet above the ground. We've talked about the rope is 45 feet long. The worker is walking away from PW at a rate of 6 feet per second. So this distance between PW and the worker has to be labeled as a variable. So let's call it X. So X will be the distance from uh, point M to line PW for the pulley, and that's labeled here in the diagram or the figure as X. So they're telling us that the worker is walking away from the pulley or away from PW at six feet per second. So that would be DX DT. That in distance is increasing, so positive six feet per second. And the question is, how fast is the weight being raised? So we need a variable to represent that. Let's use H to represent the height the weight is being raised. So H will be the height of weight W above the level of worker's hand or some variation of that statement and this is in feet so if this, this is going to help us later if this is representing h that distance that weight is being above the level of the hand worker's hand and this entire distance is 20 feet this remaining distance is 20 subtract h one more thing that we need in the problem is that we haven't talked about the rope. The rope is being held by the worker's hand and extends to the pulley and then from the pulley down to the weight. So now we have 20 minus H is this length from the pulley to, to W. We need to talk about the length from the pulley to the worker's hand because as the worker walks away, this length will be increasing. So let's call it Z. Z will be the distance from point M to P, which is the pulley. And this is in feet. So now before we start writing down any information more, the rope was 45 feet. That means Z plus 20 minus H is 45 feet. So let's come back to this in a second. We have dx dt is 6 feet per second. We need to find how fast is the weight being raised. That's dh dt. When the worker's hand is 21 feet from PW. That's, that was represented by x. So x equals 21 feet. So this is all the setup of the problem. The equation that represents, or the, the equation that relates x, h, and z 
So this distance, this distance, and this distance for a right triangle is, again, the Pythagorean Theorem. So Pythagorean Theorem says x squared, this length squared, plus 20 squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared, which we represented as z, so z squared. So this gives x squared plus 400 equals z squared. Now before you take the derivative, make sure you have all the information you need. x is 21 feet. dx dt is 6 feet per second. So that's good. Derivative of 400 won't matter. It's 0. z, we don't have any information about z in the problem. We have dh dt is what we need to find. There is no h anywhere in the equation. So that is where this equation about the rope comes in. Let's eliminate z. So solve for z. You get z equals 25 plus h. So that introduces the h into the equation. So go down here to the equation and replace z with uh, 25 plus h all to the second. Now it's okay to leave it like this as long as we take the derivative correctly. Differentiate with respect to time. So 2x dx dt plus 0 is equal to, this is going to use the chain rule and the power rule. Power rule says power to the front, keep the inside function the same, subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of the inside is dh dt because the derivative of 25 is also 0. So this gives x is 21, so 2 times 21 times dx dt, 6 feet per second, is equal to uh, 50 plus 2h times dh dt. So you already see what the problem is. We don't know what h is yet. <clears throat> this is another application of the Pythagorean Theorem. So you have this right triangle. This side is always 20 feet. We have x is equal to 21 feet at the time we need to find the derivative, uh, dh dt. And then z is 25 plus h. So if you use the Pythagorean theorem, let's put that over here, 20 squared plus 21 squared is equal to 25 plus h all squared. And now we need to solve for h. The left side comes out to be 841 equals 25 plus h all squared. Take the square root on both sides and the square root of 841 is 29, so 20 or uh, plus or minus, keep in mind the square root property, 25 plus h. Only one answer will make any sense. h is equal to negative 54, that doesn't make sense. The other one will make sense, subtract 25 and you get 4 feet for h. So now we can substitute 4 in for h in this equation. So 2 times 21 times 6, that is 252 equals 50 plus 2 times 4 times dh dt. And then divide by, looks like 60 or 58. So dh dt is 252 
divided by 58, which will come out to be, if you simplify or, re or approximate it, about 4.35. And now the units, H was in feet and time was in seconds. So as the worker is walking away from the pulley at 6 feet per second, when the worker is exactly 21 feet away from the pulley and the weight, that straight line PW, the weight is being lifted at a rate of 4.35 feet per second. So this gives you another good application of how to use the Pythagorean theorem. This finishes up all the problems that we had in the guided notes. If you have any questions about any of the problems in the notes, please let me know. If you have any questions while you work on any of the problems in our online homework, please let me know that too. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video.